Hello friends, this video on P block elements part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's see one more uh, numerical. How does the reactivity of nitrogen differs from phosphorus? We have seen that nitrogen is less reactive than phosphorus. Right? Why? Because nitrogen forms this N2 molecule. It's a triple bond. This triple bond has a very high bond strength. It is difficult to break this triple bond. It's a very high bond enthalpy. So because of the small size of nitrogen, it forms this P pi P pi triple bond. Right? Due to my small size of nitrogen. If you go down the group, the size increase from nitrogen to phosphorus. Almost 80% increase in size. Phosphorus doesn't exhibit this uh, triple bond uh, kind of property. So it has almost P4 kind of structure, right? So thus, phosphorus is more reactive than nitrogen. The next is NH3 forms hydrogen bond but not PH3. This we have seen. If you talk about NH3, then you talk about PH3. So in uh, nitrogen and hydrogen, nitrogen, if you talk about the nitrogen electronegativity is 3. For phosphorus, it is 2.1, hydrogen also 2.1. This is electronegativity value. So nitrogen and hydrogen, nitrogen is more electronegative, so it will try to attract the electron towards itself. Nitrogen gets slightly negative charge, hydrogen gets slightly positive charge. Since there is a slightly negative and positive charge to be attracted by nearby NH3. Right? So this is slightly negative charge. There will be hydrogen bond here. But in pH3, the electronegativity difference is almost zero. Phosphorus and hydrogen both are having the same values for electronegativity. So phosphorus won't develop any partial positive or partial negative charge. So in that case, there will not be any hydrogen bonding here. No H bond here. But in this case, we'll have H bond. Right? So since there is a H bond, I mean since there is a what do you call difference in electronegativity. And thus, NST forms H bond, but PST doesn't form H bond. The question is illustrate how copper metal react or give different products in the reaction with nitric acid. So we have seen that dilute and concentration, concentrated and dilute nitric acid gives a different product, right? And nitric acid, the concentrated nitric acid is a very strong oxidizing agent. For example, you have copper and you react with nitric acid and you have dilute you see the output is CuNO3 2 plus NO plus what but you take the same copper and you again have a nitric acid but in this case you have a concentrated nitric acid what you get is CuNO3 2 plus NO2 and you get this water this is what you get so if you see nitric acid dilute concentration giving different product the next question is uh, give the resonating structure of NO2 and N2O5 uh, this we have drawn actually let's draw NO2 so the question is uh, the HNH angle is uh, higher than HPH or HASH or HSBH angle why so if you talk about NH3 example this angle is higher then if you compare HPH angle in PS3 or HAS arsenic angle in um, ASH3 or H antimony H angle in SBH3. The question is why? See the answer is in electronegativity. If you see the electronegativity of this uh, series, this is the value. And for hydrogen, the value is 2.2. Now if you compare nitrogen and hydrogen, there is a huge difference in electronegativity. Since there is a huge difference in electronegativity if we talk about nitrogen and hydrogen. The electronegativity is, gets slightly negative charge, gets slightly positive charge. Nitrogen and hydrogen, there is a huge difference in electronegativity. Nitrogen is 3.04, hydrogen is 2.2. Nitrogen attracts electron towards itself. Right? And thus there will be more repulsion between the hydrogen. If you see, the nitrogen already had a lone pair of electrons, and since this is attracting electron towards electron. There is more electron density on this nitrogen. More electron density on the nitrogen, that is more repulsion. Right? And thus, more bond angle. Okay? 
but in these cases we see the electronegativity is different, is different is less for example p and h if you see phosphorus is 2.19 hydrogen is almost 2.2 almost same talk about arsenic 2.18 and hydrogen is 2.2 almost same we talk about uh, antimony in hydrogen almost same so in that case the electronegativity difference is less so you don't get uh, one place where you get more charge charge density at this point is less in other cases okay the next question is why r3po exists but r3no doesn't exist r is an alkyl group we talk about r3no so in this case you are talking about covalency of 1 2 3 4 5 but for nitrogen the maximum covalency is 4 because it doesn't have empty d orbital it doesn't have empty d orbital but in case of phosphorus it has empty d orbital in case of nitrogen it doesn't have empty d orbital so nitrogen cannot expand beyond 4 coordination number. so thus r3 no is not possible explain why ns3 is basic while bi h3 is feebly basic See, this is uh, Ni and this is Pi. You see the small size and you see the big size. Right? Now, if we talk about NiH3, since nitrogen is small in size, the lone pair of electrons it has, it is concentrated on a small reason. Small reason. But if the dense charge density per volume is more, but you talk about BiH3, this is Bi, and then we have H. Then you have H and then you have H. So now in this case, if you see, since BI is big, bismuth is big, the lone pair electrons are distributed over this region. So the charge density per volume, we're talking about charge density per unit volume. So this is more in this case, this is less in this case. This is more and this is less in case of BiH3. Since it is less here, what happens is this is feebly basic and this is more basic because the charge density per unit volume is more here, so it can easily donate electron. Since it can easily donate electron, it is basic in nature. But in this case, charge electron charge density per unit volume is very less, so it cannot easily donate electron. So it is feebly basic. The question is nitrogen exists as diatomic molecule but phosphorus exists as P4. Something like this. Why? See nitrogen, if you see small size, phosphorus big size, almost 80% increase. We have seen that in size. Nitrogen is small in size, so nitrogen forms my P pi P pi bond. Right? Nitrogen forms my P pi P pi bond with itself. And thus this N2 is very stable. This is triple bond, very difficult to break. So it exists as diatomic molecule. But if you see phosphorus is bigger in size, so it can't form P5, P5. P5 is not possible with itself. And thus P4 exists. Okay. The difference between red phosphorus and white phosphorus. We talk about white, it is soft and waxy, solid. We talk about red, this is uh, hard and crystalline solid. That is the first difference. We talk about the second difference. This has a garlic smell, a white one. And this red one has no smell. We talk about the third difference, white is poisonous. And this is non poisonous. The red is non poisonous. Talk about the fourth distance. This is insoluble water. Water insoluble but soluble in CS2. This guy is insoluble in water, insoluble in CS2. Insoluble in both. Right? This white we have seen is more reactive. It catches fire easily and this red is less react correct this white exists as p4 and this exists as tetrahedral unit tetrahedral p4 unit 
right? There's a weak uh, Van der Waals force of attraction between these units, and there between these units they have a covalent bond. We have seen that, right? There's a covalent bond actually between these two units. So these are the main difference between white and red phosphors. Why nitrogen shows? How does nitrogen or why does nitrogen shows catenation property less than phosphorus? See, nitrogen has weak N and single bond. The single bond is weak for nitrogen, but for phosphorus, the single bond is strong. Right? Why? Nitrogen is small in size. Phosphorus is big in size. So nitrogen is small in size. There is more repulsion. Nitrogen, you have. More repulsion because the electron density is more in these balls, right? So it's more repulsion. But in this case, it's big in size, so repulsion is less. Okay. So since the nitrogen nitrogen single bond is weak, but phosphorus phosphorus single bond is strong, so phosphorus has more tendency to form catenation. Catenation is like you form a chain. For example, carbon, right? Carbon form a lot of uh, this kind of chain. This is called catenation. The next is give the disproportional reaction of S three PO three S three PO three. The oxidation number will be six minus three is three, so it's plus three. So if you see S three PO three, it will disproportional to H three PO four and PH three. This will have minus three and this will have plus five oxidation state. This had plus three. This we have seen. The next is can PCl five act as oxidizing agent as well as reducing agent? No. PCl5 is only oxidizing agent. It's only oxidizing agent. If you see, phosphorus oxidation state is plus five, right? And we say that phosphorus for group fifteen elements, the oxidation state range from minus three to plus five. So this plus five can't increase more. It is the maximum value. It can only reduce. If it reduces, that means the phosphorus is getting reduced on its own. That is, phosphorus will oxidize something else. That means PCl5 is always an oxidizing agent. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.